What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode. I'm Swiper Kim, and welcome to the channel. Y'all, hit the subscribe button. Let's get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the 2021 NBA playoffs, y'all. We going to Serbia, stopping in Belgrade. Let's get it done. So, we are going to a new series. The Denver Nuggets closed out a series with the Portland Trail Blazers with a 126 to 115 win. Yoke finished with 38 points in the game. Monte Morris with 22 points and nine assists in the game. The Denver Nuggets beat them four to two, and they are on to the next round of the playoffs. And that's what this episode is about. We're getting a matchup preview with the Denver Nuggets against the Phoenix Suns in the second round of the NBA playoffs. By the way, I just want to shout some things out so we don't by bypass this at all. But there's some really important things that you all need to know about what we just saw from Nikola Jokic. What we just saw from Nikola Jokic and the Denver Nuggets before we head into the next round. Here is the stat. Key stat per ESPN. Nikola Jokic is the first player since Dirk Nowinski in 2002, the first player since Dirk in 2002 to average 30 points per game on 10 rebounds per game on 50% field goal percentage and 40% from three in a playoff series. He is the first player since Dirk to do 30 and 10 rebounds on 50% shooting from the field, 40% shooting from the three-point line throughout the entire series. He's the first one. What we're seeing from Yoke is absolute special. Absolutely special. Also, from Justin Kubatko. Justin Kubatko on Twitter. Nikola Jokic in the first round of the 2021 playoffs averaged 33 points per game, 10.5 rebounds per game, on 52.8% field goal percentage, on 42.9% from the three-point line, on 91.2% from the free throw line. He is the first player in NBA history to average at least 30 points with 10 rebounds on 50, 40, 90 shooting splits for an entire postseason series. He's the first player in NBA history to score 30 points per game and 10 rebounds per game on 50, 40, 90 shooting. So for all the people that are saying that this is the worst MVP in the last 35 years, nah. Nikola Jokic is looking like one of the best MVPs in the last 35 years, which how dominant he was in the regular season, how dominant he is in the playoffs. Right now, over the course of his career, Nikola Jokic, per Justin Kubatko again, in 1,000 career playoff points he crossed in game six. He crossed 1,000 career playoff points. Through 39 games, Nikola Jokic is averaging 26 points per game. 11.1 rebounds per game, and 6 assists per game. No other player in NBA history has averaged at least 25, 10, and 5. 25 points, 10 rebounds, and 5 assists over his first 39 career playoff games. He is also shooting in 39 career playoff games, 52% from the field, 42% from the three-point line, and 85% from the free throw line. First player to put up 26, 11, and 6 ever through 39 games. First player ever. Right now, right now, Yoke is sitting on, in a career, in 39 playoff games, he's averaging 26 points per game, which is good for 11 all-time. He's 11th all-time in playoff scoring per game. Not, not, this, I'm not talking about LeBron. I'm not talking about Dirk. I'm not talking about one of these other great, historically great scores. Nikola Jokic, the pass man himself. 8.3 assists per game, the most dominant passing big of all time, one of the most dominant passers of all time. It's averaging 26 points per game. Here are the people ahead of him on the all-time per game list and scoring in playoff NBA history. Michael Jordan, 33 points per game. Allen Iverson, 29 points per game. Kevin Durant, 29 points per game. Jerry West, 29 points per game. LeBron James, 28 points per game. Donovan Mitchell, 27 points per game. Anthony Davis, 27 points per game. Elgin Bear, 27 points per game. George Jervin, 26 points per game. Stephen Curry, 26 points per game. And Nikola Jokic, 26 points per game in front of Hakeem Olajuwon, in front of Damian Lillard, in front of Kobe Bryant, in front of Bob Pettit, in front of Dominic Wilkins, in front of Dirk Nowitzki, in front of Rick Barry, in front of Carl Malone, and in front of Russell Westbrook. That's how great, that is how great he has been, simply as a scorer. Simply as a scorer, you all. So, I just wanted to highlight that. 
that needs to be talked out that we are watching historical greatness. So before we move on into the next series, give Nikola Jokic his props for how great he has been just so far in his very young career in just his third round, his third stint in the NBA playoffs. He's also now on the Phoenix. So these are things that people need to know. The marquee matchup of this series is going to be Nikola Jokic versus DeAndre Ayton. Nikola Jokic versus DeAndre Ayton. And it's going to be Facundo Campazzo, Austin Rivers, Monte Morris, Shaquille Harrison, and also, shoot, Marcus Howard and Will Barton when he comes back and P.J. Dozier when he comes back, if he comes back in this series. It's going to be those guards versus Chris Paul, Devin Booker, Cameron Payne, and Carter. That's going to be a very key matchup because the Denver Nuggets are going to be able to have to keep pace with Chris Paul, who's hobbled, who averaged less than 10 points per game in the last series. He's probably going to be a little bit hobbled in this series, which, again, you don't want anybody to be injured. You want everybody to be healthy, but that's probably going to help out the Denver Nuggets just a little bit. And then Devin Booker. Devin Booker right now in the playoffs, y'all, is averaging 29.7 points per game through six games on 6.2 rebounds a game, five assists per game. And he's not playing bad at all. Devin Booker's averaging 29. DeAndre Ayton is averaging 15 and 10 in the playoffs so far. Cameron Payne, 12 points on three assists. Jay Crowder, 11 points so far in the playoffs. So it's going to be very important, very important that the Denver Nuggets are playing very well on the perimeter. But also this, Devin Booker, this in so far in the playoffs, shooting 43% from the three-point line. Cameron Payne, 42%. Jay Crowder, only 30%. Mikhail, Mikhail Bridges, only 38%. Chris Paul, 20%. Cameron Johnson, 41%. Sark, 33%. Torrey Craig, beloved Torrey Craig, 36%. So they got some shooters. But the thing that the Phoenix Suns are great at, they are great at rotations on defense. Great at rotations on defense. It's going to be extremely important that, here's the thing, let's talk about Phoenix side. What does Phoenix need to do to win this series? They have a clear matchup advantage at the guard positions. Clear matchup advantage at the guard position. With Chris Paul, with Devin Booker, that's one of the best back backcourts in the NBA. Maybe this season in the Western Conference, that might be the best backup, the best backcourt in the Western Conference at least. Not including Stephen Clay, because Clay was hurt. So this year, that might have been the best backcourt in the entire West and arguably in the entire NBA. They have a distinct matchup advantage. Facundo Campazzo is listed at 5'11", 5'10". Chris Paul is about six feet tall. But again, one of the greatest point guards ever, top five point guard in NBA history. He's very elusive. He's very crafty. He's going to make Facundo Campazzo ride his back when he's coming off of pick and rolls. He's going to get mid-range shots, fadeaways on the, on the baseline and also inside of the key. Chris Paul is also really great at making sure he's backing down smaller players. He's going to try to get Facundo Campazzo in foul trouble. So he, Facu's going to have to play very well on both sides of the ball. He's going to need to hit his threes. He's going to need to be careful with the ball. He's going to need to make sure he's picking and rolling and coming downhill. He's going to need to make sure that he's getting people involved. But they have a very clear matchup advantage, a top five point guard of all time. And Devin Booker, who... Historically in his career, is not a great three-point shooter, but he's shooting really well right now. So what's going to be Devin Booker's story? Because there's, gonna, there's not going to be Gary Harris to slow him down. And then the thing that really hurts Denver, that gives Phoenix a distinct advantage, is the fact that Devin Booker is going to be going against Austin Rivers. So that's going to be the best scoring guard combo that he has to go against. So similar to what happened with Damian Lillard, there's not going to be a lot of people putting Dame on pressure on, on the defensive side that's going to make him tire down. Not right now, Devin Booker's going to have to guard Austin Rivers. And Austin might attack sometimes, but he's mostly going to be a spot of three-pointer and a creator. So really interested to see what that's going to look like. Really interested. I think if I'm Phoenix, I'm trying to blitz Facundo Campazzo. I'm trying to blitz Monte Morris. I'm going to make them play on their heels because I want to see if I can get into the paint as much as possible. I want to utilize a rim runner and DeAndre Ayton as much as possible if I'm Chris Paul. I want to make sure that I'm putting Nikola Jokic in pick and roll. Not that he can't play defense against it, but again, Jokic knows he can't foul out. So he's going to be a little soft sometimes on the hedges because he's going to need to stay out of foul trouble. And also, I'm going to make sure that I'm coming downhill. I'm going to make Aaron Gordon. I'm going to make Michael Porter Jr. have to cheat over from the help side position. And I'm going to leave Cameron Payne and, and Mikhail Bridges in the corner or Jay Crowder in the corner by themselves and trust that they're going to hit their threes throughout the series. 
That's going to be a great game plan. Then on top of that, if somebody closes out, I'm going to kick it back out to Devin Booker, who's going to hit his three-point shot. And really, if Chris Paul can make his threes, that's going to change things as well. The Phoenix Suns have a really great team, so do not sleep on the Phoenix Suns. They have an excellent team. They're an excellent defensive team. They were top seven, I believe, in defense this year. They're also a top seven offensive team as well. Now, they waned off the last 15 games of the year. They were not a great defensive team. Uh, I think schematically, teams started figuring them out a little bit, but also they were dealing with a little bit of injuries here and there. Uh, but again, they're a really, really, really good team. They were number two in the West for a reason, number one throughout the year for a good portion as well. So the, they have a distinct advantage at the guard position. Now, wings, this is going to be crucial. This is going to be crucial. Mikel Bridges is going to have to show up. He's going to have to be great on dribble penetration and great on spot-up shooting and also great against playing against Michael Porter Jr. Mikel Bridges is going to have to win that matchup. If the Phoenix Suns are going to win this series, Mikel is going to have to win that matchup. It's going to be imperative that he wins that MPJ matchup. Cameron Johnson is going to be another great option off the bench. He's an elite shooter. He's tall. can play some defense. Cameron Johnson and Mikael Bridges and Jay Crowder are going to be very important in this series because they are going to have to give Michael Porter Jr.'s problem. Because if Michael Porter Jr. is comfortable, that's going to derail their game plan. Here's the thing. If I'm Phoenix, I'm going to trust DeAndre Ayton to, to man-to-man, not stop, but slow down Nikola Jokic. He's going to have to slow down Nikola Jokic. Make him focus on him, use that great defense that he showed throughout the year, and make everybody else play a man. So, Aiton, go ahead and slow him down. Don't fall for all the up and unders. Don't fall for all the moves, the spins, and the fakes. Stay disciplined in your assignment. And y'all, Crowder, Mikael Bridges, Cameron Johnson, Devin Booker, Chris Paul, stay attached to your man. Don't let Austin Rivers get confident. Don't let Facundo Campazzo get confident. Don't let Monte Morris get confident. Don't let my, Do not let Michael Porter Jr. get confident because he's already proven that he can give you six threes in the first quarter gives you 22 points in the first quarter. Do not let them beat you. Make Yoke a score. If he has an inefficient game, good. But do not make him... So this is also the thing with DeAndre Ayton. He's going to have to play well and play smart because his backup is Frank the Tank Kaminsky and Dario Sark. You do not, you do not, if I'm Phoenix want to play any of those options other than Aiden versus Nikola Jokic. You don't want that. And also, people need to hear this. Nikola Jokic, in his career against DeAndre Aiden, in seven games, is averaging 25.9 points per game, 11.3 rebounds per game, 7.9 assists per game, in seven games against DeAndre Aiden. Remember, DeAndre's first game against Yoke, Yoke gave him a 35-point triple-double on 100% field goal accuracy. First in NBA history. So, Yoke has said, if you listen to him, he said that DeAndre Aiden gives him the most problem because DeAndre is long, he's strong, and he is a great, disciplined young player. Really good player. Yoke really respects him. Aiden's going to have to play discipline. He's going to have to because that's going to be the biggest issue for Phoenix. They don't have any interior help. So, if I'm Phoenix, again, pick and roll to death, Yoke. Making sure I'm, I'm staying disciplined and attached to Michael Porter Jr. I'm, I'm rubbing him up off screens, and I'm also making sure that as much as I can, make the others have to play really well to beat you. Make them play really well. They've already proven they can do it, but you have to make them beat you. Make them hit their shots. Make them have to beat you off the dribble at times, but be disciplined. The players you don't need cooking you are Yoke, Michael Porter Jr., if Michael Porter Jr. gives you 25 to 30 points a game, you're likely going to lose. Limit him as much as possible. Be physical with him. Anyway, so that's what I'm doing if I'm Phoenix. And I, I feel good about that if I'm Phoenix. I know that I have to stay disciplined, but I feel good about that if I'm Phoenix. Now, if I'm Denver, well, Denver is going to have to play discipline and sound defense. Chris Paul is going to come downhill off pick and rolls. He's going to make Faku or Monte Morris or whoever, Will Barton, he's going to make him ride behind. He's going to get his mid-range shots. Devin Booker, excellent mid-range shooter. Not a great in-season three-point shooter, but he's doing great in the playoffs right now. I am going to make Devin Booker work for every single thing that he has. Austin Rivers, Will Barton, maybe P.J. Dozier. When Michael Porter Jr. is matched up on him, make him work. Trap. Trap, trap. Devin Booker is not the greatest when it comes to throwing out of a trap or assisting out of a trap. Trap him. Make him run the hump on everything. 
Make him work on defense. Austin Rivers is going to have to give you something. Austin Rivers is going to have to give you something on offense. That way he can't just sit there and just be sitting by himself. If I'm Michael Porter Jr., make him work when he gets the ball. Make him work when he's on defense. you got to make him work. You have to. He's going to play well. Now, this is the thing. Devin Booker historically did not play that well against the Nuggets because Gary Harris has always given him problems. And schematically, the way that the Nuggets run their defense, they always play up on screens. It's always given Devin some kind of problems. He's historically hasn't played really well against the Nuggets. So I'm trapping him as much as possible. I'm making him work as much as possible. Chris Paul is going to be Chris Paul. Chris Paul looks a little dinged up. Play physical with Chris Paul. Play physical with Chris Paul. Make him prove that he's healthy. Make him prove he's a shooter. You might even want to lay off him on three-pointers. Could at least try to get in his head. Chris Paul is a good playoff performer, but he's not a historically great playoff performer. Make him make him believe that you don't think he can hit three-point shots. You only shot 20% in the first round. Make him prove. If I'm playing that first game, I might play under the screens. Because I'm going to play under the screens. That way, Chris Paul can't just do whatever he wants on pick and roll and drive and, drive and kick. That's where he's a problem. That runner, when, when DeAndre Ayton is the runner, that's a problem. Denver Nuggets, man. If I'm Yoke, I'm going to destroy DeAndre Ayton. I'm going to get DeAndre Ayton out of the game. He will not be comfortable. You said Nurk, 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 Nurkic, he, he, he learned that last round. They said the thing about Ayton, he's a better defender per man than Nurk is. But he is also not as big of a body. So Yoke typically does pretty well against more lankier defenders. Now, he's a little bit thicker than Nerland's Noel, but he has a body type like him. So I would make him work 1,000%. Foul him out. Again, Yoke is averaging 26, 11, and 8 versus Aiton in his career. I think that's about what you can expect. The assist might not be there, but Yoke is probably going to be around 32, 33 points per game in this series. 12 to 13 to 14 rebounds in the series. Remember, y'all, he, in this in this season, in this season, Yoke had a 29 point and 22 rebound and like a six assist game. Again, remember, y'all, the Denver Nuggets won this series two to one. They won two overtime games versus Phoenix, and the first game was a really close game as well. So these are going to be nail biters. This might be the best series of the the conf, of the playoffs. And again, y'all, that's just the way Denver Nuggets play their playoffs. This might be the best series of the playoffs so far. I think Brooklyn and, and the Bucks is going to be a really good one as well. But I think that because these teams are so close, especially with Jamal Murray out and Jokic playing so well, expect Jokic to go off. Expect Jokic to be around 30-10, 30-10-5, 32-10-5, 32-12-5. 30, 10, 5, 32, I think that's about why, what you can expect, 32-12-5, and 5, because you can have a lot of rebounding success. Jay Crowder is small. Aiden does not play on the perimeter. And then on top of that, you get Frank Kaminsky in the game, he's going to get cooked. Dario is going to get cooked. Make Aiden get out of the game because he's the best option they have. They don't even have an Ennis Cantor. At least Ennis is a big body, great offensive rebounder. Frank, he can shoot on the outside. Dario can shoot on the outside, but they are not great defenders. Yoke should, I mean, I mean, like elite level play, elite level play. Michael Porter Jr., we should expect him to get around anywhere from 21 to 26 points per game in this series. He has the opportunity. He has the window. Mikael Bridges is a great defender, but he is not going to be the physical, physical threat that Norman Powell was. Because Norman was because he's smaller, was allowed by the referees to get further into Michael Porter Jr. So Jay Crowder, he's going to be on him. Mikael Bridges, he's going to be on him. Cameron Johnson, he's going to be on him. Michael Porter Jr. is going to need to play well. Again, he's the second most efficient scorer, 19 plus points per game in NBA history. He's going to get his. Now, we're moving on. Remember, Jamal Murray in that Spurs series. Jamal Murray, first game, struggled. That second game, he struggled until the fourth quarter. Then he started to figure it out. Jamal Murray, though, when he went up in that next round against Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum in the 2019 playoffs, he went at them. Had back-to-back 34-point games because he was confident. Driving to the hole, step-back three-pointers, floaters, behind-the-basket shots. Jamal Murray stepped up because he kind of learned the ins and outs of the playoffs. The same thing's going to happen to Michael Porter Jr. The same thing's going to happen to Michael Porter Jr. I believe Michael Porter Jr. is going to play really well because he's going to have to. But this is going to be the key. Austin Rivers, hit your shots. He's shooting like 52% from three so far in the playoffs. Austin Rivers, hit your shots and play defense against Devin Booker. Make him work. Be that defender you were against C.J. McCollum. Be that defender you were against Damian Lillard. You have to make him work. You have to. I think Aaron Gordon's going to be crucial. 
Aaron Gordon is the type of player that can man up against Devin Booker. Make him play against that six foot eight, two hundred and thirty pound body. Make him play against that athletic body. Make him work around the screen. Make him work getting to the basket. Aaron Gordon is going to be crucial. Crucial defensive player. We need Aaron Gordon this year to be around 14, 6, and 3. Hit at least 40 to 38% of his three-point shots. Hit 50% of his field goals because they're going to be easy. They're going to be mid-range shots available to him because of yoke. Hit his cuts. Play defense. And at least 75% from the, three, from the free throw line. If you can get that, if you can get 14, 6, and 3 on 50%, 38%, and also 75%, that's a winning combination right there. That's a winning combination right there. Austin Rivers hit 40% of your three-pointers, man. You're going to need to. Facundo Campazzo, play great defense. Be the gnat. Hit your shots. Hit 37% of your three-point shots. Monte Morris, you need to outplay Cameron Payne. Monte Morris needs to outplay Cameron Payne in order for them to win this series. Cameron Payne is playing really well. He's a great going downhill. He's a good shooter. But Monte Morris, again, I believe, have been saying since last season, he's the best backup point guard in the NBA. He's going to have to be that, especially with Jamal Murray out. That late game pick and roll is going to be crucial because it's going to be tight. Probably majority of these games are going to be pretty tight. So Monte Morris, go ahead, do what you do. Will Barton should be back in this series. Will Barton's going to be another great component coming off of the bench. Great component coming off the bench. He's going to alleviate a lot of concern from a uh, secondary ball hander, also another score, also another three-point shooter. So Will Barton's going to come back, hopefully, this series. Michael Porter Jr. needs to play well. Aaron Gordon needs to play well. Michael Green and Paul Millsap, they need to outplay Frank Kaminsky and Dario Sark. They need to outplay them. They also need, as much as they can, to out-physical and out-rebound Cameron Johnson, Sark, and Kaminsky. Could, this is not really JaVale McGee's series. So, Jermichael Green and Paul Millsap need to hit their shots. They need to rebound, and they need to make sure they're playing good defense against those secondary bigs. And even against some of those wing players like Cameron Johnson at time. Make sure they're playing good pick-and-roll defense. Make sure they're communicating. Make sure they're hitting their free throws. They have an opportunity to get a win. That backup unit with the Denver Nuggets with, shoot, if Will Barton's there, with Monte Morris, with Marcus Howard or Shaq Harrison, probably Marcus Howard, shoot, with the Jermichael Green I mean, shoot, with a Paul Millsap, uh, they're going to have to play well. Michael Porter Jr. is going to be on that unit as well. They're going to have to play well. So here's my overall series prediction. I've been weighing this a lot, y'all. My series prediction, I believe Nikola Jokic goes off. I believe he's the best player in the series by a pretty wide margin. I believe Michael Porter Jr. is going to play well because he has to. I think because he has more confidence about himself. I know Chris Paul is going to do Chris Paul things if he's healthy. I think DeAndre Ayton. I think DeAndre Ayton is going to be around 19 and 10, 19 and 11 in the series. I think he's going to have the opportunity to. He's not going to be great every game, but he's going to be good. He's going to be good. He's going to have good footwork. He's going to play decent defense. But, again, I don't know how much you can stop Yoke if you're Ayton. But I think Ayton going to be around 19 and 11. I think that Devin Booker is going to be around 23 to 24 and 6 and 4. Because I think it's going to be a little harder for him to score. I think its efficiency would drop a little bit. Uh, I think the person who might have the best series, maybe from a shooting standpoint, would be Cameron Johnson. I think Mikael Bridges will have the opportunity, but I really like Cameron Johnson off that bench. I think he's going to play really well. Uh, Cameron Payne and Monte Morris are, might be a wash. Uh, I, I think that Jay Crowder, hit or miss, kind of like Robert Covington on three-pointers. You know, you might get it. He might hit his shots. He might not. He's going to talk a little bit. Uh, him and Yoke went back back and forth a couple years ago uh, in the regular season. I think in this series, given everything that we talked about, given the fact that the Phoenix Suns are healthy, the, the Nuggets are still missing Jamal Murray, given the fact that Will Barton might come back, given the fact that P.J. Dozier, the best wing defender they have, may not come back this series, may come back this series. I'm predicting a Game 7 and a Game 7 in which the Denver Nuggets win. I'm predicting Game 7, Denver Nuggets win. Uh, Nikola Jokic is a great elimination player. Nikola Jokic is 3-1 and one in Game 7s in his career. He is a historically great elimination and closeout game player. He is one of the best ever when it comes to elimination games and closeouts. So I think that the tighter the series gets, the better Chris Paul will be, and the better that Nikola Jokic will be. I think Nikola Jokic is just so much of a better player right now because he's clearly the best player in the NBA. And I think that he's going to be the best player remaining in the Western Conference every series he's in. 
And I think this is going to be another opportunity for him to really show out. So I'm predicting Denver Nuggets to win this series in seven games. Let me know what you think in the comment section. If you're a Nuggets fan, if you're a Phoenix Suns fan, let me know what you think. Was I fair? Did I have a fair analysis of what they're going to be doing? Let me know if I'm missing anything. Y'all share the video. Let's get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the playoffs, y'all. Y'all, swipe gang tomorrow night. We back for another episode, the start of another great Denver Nuggets Phoenix Suns series. Let's go, y'all. And we out.